Welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. My name is Antonio, and we are here for another episode. I think we are on episode number 23. Wow. How exciting it has been. Today, we are talking about excuses, right, and why not to have them and how not to allow excuses run our life. And, and why they make God angry. Why they make God yeah. angry. I do have to say, uh, for those of you watching on YouTube or mm -hmm. listening on YouTube, we do have the podcast now officially. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, we, we are available on iTunes. Yes. Or the Apple podcast. Apple podcast. And we will let you know if once we confirm Spotify as well. Ooh. Yeah. So that's A lot of exciting. people like Spotify. Yeah. I noticed. I, I didn't realize how many people, because I use the Apple, but yeah. a, lot, a lot of people like podcast on Spotify. so is is that more the um like the google side so of things? yeah if like you're on yeah if you were on a android or android Pixel or, or, yeah you could use that but i think there's apple users that use spotify as well there are yeah so yeah, but definitely. yes th yeah because you wouldn't have apple podcasts kind of need to get that going though because i know some people want it automatically uploaded mm -hmm. and so if you're one of those people that you've been yep. frustrated that you've had to go to the youtube yeah. or go to the, even the rock app and then right. go through that if you wanted to just pop up on your morning commute or whatever it is, now exactly. we do have that available for and you. It makes it easy to use than having yeah. to go to this and then go yeah. through the videos. We have a lot of great content on the Rock Church YouTube channel, so go through that. But now, if you specifically want this, it'll just yeah. And you forget. I know I have notifications on on podcasts, and it lets me know when. So we're when we're here drop. to make your life easier. Come on, yeah. And hopefully, we get to be on part of your. I, I listen to podcasts as I'm doing errands around the house. Mm -hmm. Mowing the lawn, washing dishes, cooking. Going to the gym. Yeah. I mean, it makes it easy. So if we're part of your routine, hey, we're glad to be here. And our thought, our prayer is that we would be something that would encourage you and also challenge you because we are a sermon rewind. This is a sermon rewind. This is not your sermon of the weekend. This is not a preaching, a message. This is something supplemental that we'll add on to as we go into what we're doing here in the house as we yeah. are talking about the book of Romans. No excuses. Line upon line. We're in a mini series within the Roman series. Yeah. What makes God angry? What makes God angry? Um, well, we talked about something that made you angry again this morning. Ooh. As your pet, talking about your pet. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Unexpected. I, I was telling Pastor Antonio and, and Ethan, Ethan, actually, you guys can't see him or hear him. He's actually uh, in the room with us, though working all the sound and yeah. the video and all Shout that. Shout out to Ethan. Stuff. It's his last episode. Last episode for with now. us. Who knows what the Ma future holds. You know, he's, he's going back to Biola. Yeah. And uh, he's very smart. Yeah. So we're talking about him. He just has to sit there and take this right now. So Shout take out it, to Ethan. the, what are You're you guys? Smart. Are you the whales or what is, you don't even know. Uh, what are the Biola? The Knights? The Eagles. Eagles. Oh, okay, Biola That's Eagles. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't know this. Biola Bible Institute of Los Angeles. Oh, wow. That makes sense. Yeah. Isn't that great? That is cool. I, I, I was on the campus with a friend who had a, a connection with a job. I was I was helping do catering one time yeah. for one of their events. And I remember um, just I could not get mushrooms out fast enough. <laughs> they, they just wanted it. And then they had beef stroganoff, which I got to eat for lunch. That was a perk. Um, but I remember being on the campus. They had this beautiful painting of Jesus with his hands held out and a Bible. Do you still have that there? The painting up on the wall, yeah, and um, and the uh, the neat thing about it is is that the the pages of the Bible are the same color as Jesus's skin because the Word made flesh. Oh wow! And that, I, that I just thought that cool. was like legit. I'm like, art, see, art does some really art can cool speak, things. it can yeah, teach, you that know. Is so so cool. that, and actually, that's why when you go to some of these cathedrals back in Europe, mm -hmm. and even uh, when I was in Israel uh, this last time, we went to some of their Catholic churches and cathedrals yeah. and things like that. And they have art up on the walls because the people couldn't read. Mm -hmm. And so they would teach them through the visual right. illustrations and, and they could literally go through the gospel through eternal judgment. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's why you see some crazy things up in there yeah. that you're like, why would they have that? You mm -hmm. know, but really the reason why is because they were teaching about revelation. They were teaching about the end times, yep. uh, eternal judgment, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. through art. Yeah. It's kind of neat. But well, yes, my dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know how I got on my like <laughs> Ethan to Biola to yeah. art to. That was a good one though. I that, mean, that, we could trace that yeah, back. That's an sure. interesting train of thought. Yeah, huh? I mean, mind hey, mapping. I, I, when the train goes, I have no idea. Where, the fact that you can come come back to it. I, I can't believe that. Yeah. No, I, I was in my routine this morning trying to get ready, and so I, I got here a little bit late. Made that's how, okay. right? Yes, Antonio and, and Ethan yeah. made them a little wait on me like ten minutes because <laughs> my stinking little dog. Um, for some reason she does not get it. Uh, she is a shih tzu. <laughs> 
And uh, we often joke that they're named that for a yeah, reason right. because she just doesn't get where right. to go potty. And yeah. um, so, like, she'll just sneak off. And um, so I went down. Uh, I have a basement in my house, and we put all of our workout equipment down there. And so I went down there, and I, and I had to stop and clean the whole downstairs because she left a minefield down there. I'm like, how does one little dog have so much? Wow. I, it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, I probably need to stop open feeding her. And some people are like, you give them one scoop. You know, oh, whereas yeah. we just let the bowl yeah. be filled. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And just tell the dogs be warm, right. be filled, be gone. You know. And is the is your dog hefty or are they on a good? You diet? know, when it, it's crazy because when we take her to the vet, they're like, "Oh no, she's normal size and weight." Yeah. You know, oh. but but she's fluffy. Yeah. Like like her her fur. Right. I mean, the Shih Tzu, they yeah. have the, like long hair. You yeah. know, and so when we let her go, people are like, "Oh, she's so fat." You know, yeah. but then when you shave her, when you throw her in the pool or something yeah. like that, she's like, oh, you know, so. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, she's she's a chunky little girl. So that made you a little bit angry, though, because it kind of disrupted your oh, day. Man. Yeah. I mean, no one wants to clean that stuff up. E- exactly. Right. You know, no one likes cleaning up poop. Right. No one likes. And, and uh, we have these mats, the fatigue mats, you know, for when you work out and when you put the weights down on the ground, that sort of thing. And so she thinks that those are potty pads. So she peed all over it. I'm hit, right. They're like wiping it down, right. you know, and uh, I'm. I'm holding back a text because pastor jess is over preaching in the in the the women's meeting this morning <laughs> and i'm holding back the text that hey this is why i don't work out that <laughs> often because i i hate cleaning up the dog stuff all downstairs you know so yeah hey, i mean ever just, an excuse not to work out like a, this is why yeah this is why <laughs> gosh i'm gonna go eat chips yeah <laughs> excuses stress, oh my gosh stress hey, we eating, just talked yeah. about anger we and just excuses went right, in that's, the, hey that's how it happens look at that so See, that's so good, though, because you think about how one can turn into the other. That's true. Um, but that's not how God operates. Well, I think I think that uh, on our end, it would be right. more like me being mad at the dog and the dog saying, you didn't let me out. Right. Oh, you know? yeah. So that's oh, why I went yeah. outside. The dog or went inside, yeah. I should say. You know? Right. So, yeah. And we can come up with excuses for anything. Tons. Yeah. Tons. What's your favorite excuse? The kids. I like blaming the kids. You like to blame <laughs> the kids? <laughs> Because I have Apparently younger ones. I like ones. to blame the dog. I was late because <laughs> the dog. Younger ones, you know? they're not really uh, able to explain. <laughs> this is really bad. Because they, can, you know, they like, well, you know, I can. They're, it was they're the still so little. The they require a lot of extra work, extra time. They do things unexpected. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they might still have accidents, so that will put me back on time. Yeah, I um, remember driving. Uh, I used to live in Moreno Valley and driving across the canyon to get to Redlands and meet up with Jess. Or um, I was working with the church over in, in Redlands for a while, uh, leading praise and worship for a youth group. And, uh, and when we would drive over, you know, the train would go through and you get stopped. That sort oh, of thing. yes. So if you ever got yeah, there late, you, yep. you know, you'd be like, okay, what's what's this time? Oh, there was a train, right. you know, there's traffic in the, so in the canyon. Donkeys. This makes me think about it because excuses aren't always a lie. No, there can be some truth to it. Right, I lie. mean, there's not, you know, because yeah. obviously... I, I'm thinking like you're foreshadowing this weekend's <laughs> message, by the way. I mean, just oh, nice. totally. Oh, wow. W- yeah. OK. Yeah. So they're, they're not o- always alive, but uh, but they are. Yes. Avoidable or they are able to overcome. Right. Yeah. Because like, it, for instance, this morning, could I have gotten here on time if I had gotten ready faster, if right. I would have gotten up earlier, yeah. if I wouldn't have taken as much time as I did doing other things? You know, um, I, I could have definitely cut mm-hmm. that 10 minutes, you right. know, even even. Uh, with my workout and things like that, the dog isn't what made me late, right. you know, mm-hmm. necessarily. It's strictly, it's, it's true. Yeah. It happened and it did push me back, but, um, could I have adjusted somewhere else? Sure. Right. You know, I couldn't have worked out. I, I, I will say this though, because there are so many excuses that we live with and even settle with that sure. we accept. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. No problem. Well, and, and I think that's where, you know, we talked about some common excuses like, I didn't know. Right. That's a that's a valid excuse, yeah. right? And and when you don't know, you almost feel like it's justified. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know, right. you know. And and I think a lot of times, especially with with gracious people, you get a pass for that, right? You know, like I said in the message, my kids when they come and they tell me I didn't know, and genuinely they didn't know. Okay, well now you know. You know right. what I mean? Like yeah. th- that that excuse works once. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. But the second excuse that we looked at, everybody's doing it. That that doesn't. Fine. That isn't fine. Not at all. Everyone's doing it. Well, I don't care. Mm. You know, like y- you have a personal responsibility. And just because everyone's late doesn't mean you have the right to mm. be late. Just because right. everyone is, you know, sleeping around or whatever, you know, vice yeah. we're trying to excuse everybody smoking weed or yeah. everybody, you know, society has changed. We've moved on. This is right. acceptable now. It doesn't matter. Well, I think that to me, that spoke to expectations, right? Like I, I don't have the same expectations on 
society as a whole, all of your friends, if we're talking yes. about the example of our kids, yes. that I have on you. For sure. So because there's a ex- different expectation from you, then I expect different the choices and behaviors. I can't tell you how many times I've told my kids, well, you're not their kid. You're right. my kid. Right. You know, because right. they tell me, well, so-and-so's parents let right. them, you know, or right. they, they do it. And yeah. I'm like, well, I'm not their parent. Right. I'm your parent. This this is this is how we act in this family, right. you know. And, and many times I'd, I'd say that, you know, if we were watching a television show and a word came out that mm-hmm. that is unacceptable in, a, in our house, mm-hmm. I would tell my kids, we don't talk like that. Right. Now, what that gave them the understanding is other people will. Right. But we don't. Yeah. And, then, and so there's no excuse. Mm-hmm. If I hear you say it and you come to me and say, well, everyone's saying it. No, no, no. I've already told you the expectation. We, right. this family, does not talk that way. And I think that's how God is with us. You know, there's things in the Bible that, that when we look at society, we say, well, this is how everyone's going. This is what, what's happening in this right. world. And things are moving this direction. And God says, but in, in this house, mm-hmm. we don't act like right. that. We are set apart. Yeah, we're holy. We're holy. Yeah. We're distinct. We're different. Another word, distinct. I distinct, like that. Distinct. I like Moses, that one. Uh, Use that. Um, we're a peculiar people. Yes, a, pecu- a peculiar. Peter says in, in the New Testament, yeah, that we're we're going to be yeah. unusual. Yes. And the world is going to scratch their heads at us mm-hmm. and say, well, why aren't they jumping in? Right. Right. This, this is, is what everyone's doing. It. Why? Why don't they? And and God makes the expectations clear, and so we are. To meet without the, excuse. Without excuse. No excuses. Yeah. No excuses. Which that last excuse really is the lie that that people embrace like you said there's there's truth but this this is where there's an exchange that's made that i have my own truth Mm -hmm. and and there may be elements of truth within that however uh you know really i I would say it's probably more facts than truth Mm -hmm. because truth is what god says facts may be the environment that we live in yeah uh you know the things that we can see that we can calculate all that kind of stuff there may be facts that we can line up i mean if you look at the facts God's invisible. You could determine there is no God, right? Based on facts, and just yeah. say, "Hey, there's, 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 I don't, there's, I don't see him," mm-hmm. right? However, that's where we're without excuse because the creation, right? Right. It's like when you see a painting, you know that someone painted it, right? Right. In the same way, the fact that we see creation, we know that someone created it. Yeah. And, and I think that's where you know when we say, "I have my own truth," we're we're willfully rejecting the truth, and and embracing a lie. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where we were talking about foreshadowing right. because th- there's a slippery slope that happens there. Yeah. And Romans, I mean, it it starts out great, doesn't it? It's like, <laughs> man, the Apostle yeah. Paul yeah. and Rome, yeah. and I wanted to come to you guys yeah. and preach the gospel, and it's the power of yeah. God and yeah. the righteousness of God is revealed, but the wrath. And I mean, right. it's like, yeah, it, it happens fast. And I think that's what we need to understand is, is that when we look at the truth, mm-hmm. we will see in contrast to the truth, the lie. Just like right. when we look at the righteousness, we can see within the righteousness of God, the wrath of God. Yeah. Because the righteousness of God is, is good mm-hmm. and right. And, and that means that as a part of God's righteousness, that, that God would be angry about the wrong right. and the lie. Yeah. And yet people are living lies because they say, I have my own truth. And they excuse themselves from responsibility and from accountability. Right. And, th- and that's that's the hardest part to see and observe as, yeah. as a leader or mm-hmm. spiritual leader, or, s- or even as a friend of people, um, that you see people in excuse. Because when you exchange the truth, then there's not even an ex- I don't even have to give an excuse because I'm no. living out the truth of it. Yeah. So then what you're saying is it's almost... Like, you know how when you talk to someone, once they pull out the God, God card, God told me, or oh, God, yeah, you then you can't. just kind of, okay, it's kind of like the That equivalent. can be an excuse, by the way, yeah. <laughs> right. But God said. If someone, when someone says, well, this is my truth, right. it's kind of their God card, because what they are saying is their God. Their God. Their God is saying, whether it's their the reason of their excuse, and sometimes they've made that their God. For sure. Right? Their way of thinking becomes their God. Absolutely. And so that's their God yeah. card, and so what can... Uh, th- they've they're now setting their standard where we as followers of Christ right. we know our standards you're you've changed your standards according to what you want well i think that again foreshadows the next week's message because w- just like you you said when when someone pulls that card mm. you got to throw up your hands and just right. let them do what they're going to do right? right and and for those of you that are looking forward to this next weekend's message you can read ahead and find out that god does exactly that mm. that god throws oh, yes. his hands That's up right. yeah. and says all right have what you want right and that's a scary place to be in, out from underneath the covering and protection of God. And so that's where bad things start happening. Mm-hmm. So, you know, read ahead, right. read read through the end of the that's first so chapter. And man, it just, it, it it's a downward spiral. Well, then let me ask you this as we go. 
uh, in that same line of thinking, and we were kind of talking about it. So this series obviously has been about the anger, God's anger. Mm -hmm. Now, you are not saying God is an angry God. No, um, no. You're pointing it out. So, But I'm, I'm sure it could be misconstrued if one is not careful or one takes one piece or one point or one right. that now, oh, you're painting God as an angry God. How much care or forethought, mindfulness, will, if you will, do you have when you're pr putting these messages together? Because, again, line upon line, we're not dodging any topics. Right. You're not going to yeah. dodge the topics. Right. But I'm sure you also don't want to present God in any, and again, going with any thing you might approach. We, we talked yeah. about whether, you know, you're going to talk about God's grace. Well, you don't want to go too heavy in a way that depicts God as I don't, I'm so gracious, I don't care about what you do. Right. In the same way, when it comes to a harder topic, maybe to swallow like anger, you don't want to do a disservice either way. How much of the back and forth or how much, how might people take this goes into a sermon preparation? Well, you know, I, I have the responsibility as presenting the truth to preserve it in its purest form in order for people to not get the wrong impression. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, when we talk about God having anger as opposed to being an angry God, right? There's two different things, mm -hmm. and I think that's where, when we say God is love, right, that we could also conclude that God is loving, mm -hmm. and, and that that's an ongoing state because of who He is. Everything He does is loving. Yes. Uh, but when we look at an attribute of God, like His anger, we understand that God's anger is but for a moment, mm -hmm. right? That, that this is something that is provoked, it's stored up, it's under control, uh, like we said in the first part of the series, that it is not unreasonable mm -hmm. or unrighteous. Right. It's, 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 it's just. just, and it's true, and it's right. Um, however, God is not an ongoing mm -hmm. angry God, yeah. uh, in, in the sense of that God is always angry, and that mm -hmm. God never is loving. You know, we, we think in those terms of black and white, like either he is or he isn't. God, right. God can't be angry and loving at the same time, whereas I would beg to differ. I would say that God's anger is an expression of his love, mm -hmm. Right. that in God loving us, he will get angry at the things that would drag us to hell, that would that would come against us, that would harm us or hurt us, and so that even even his anger is an expression of his love in mm -hmm. those terms. You know, we, we said that in the first part with our kids, you know, when somebody comes against our kids, we get angry. Why? Because we love them, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with God. God gets angry when sin comes into our life. God gets angry when we reject him. God gets angry. Why? Because God hates us? No, because God hates sin. God hates the thought of us going to hell. Yeah. God, God hates those things. And yet, uh, you know, God still loves us enough to allow us the choice of whether we choose him or not choose him. Yeah. You know, and that's where people get the idea that, you know, God sends people to hell. God does not send people to hell right. in, the, in the terms of he delights in it or he's wanting to do that. Yeah. He, he will send them to hell if they make that choice to reject him, right? right. Because why Absolutely. would God want to be with people that didn't want to be with him on the earth right. in eternity, you know? Yeah. If they're miserable at the thought of God now, yeah. w do we want a bunch of miserable people in right. heaven, right? You right. know, it's not, it, it again, it's unreasonable. Yeah. So reason says God, a, again, we're foreshadowing a whole lot and, and getting into some <laughs> of the, the stuff that we're going to get into this weekend, but God will let people, okay, fine then. If, if right. you don't want me, if you don't want redemption, if you don't want heaven, then you can have what you want. And the right. only other option right. is our own desires, it's sin, and it's hell, mm -hmm. eventually, ultimately. And, and that's the second death that the book of Revelation talks about, which is spiritual separation for eternity. Mm. And that is the punishment, that is the burning, that is the, the torture of knowing that we rejected mm -hmm. God, and, and that knowledge, I believe, will burn like fire, eternal mm -hmm. fire, you know, right. like that, that it's going to be painful, that it's going to be mm -hmm. horrific. Uh, you know, the things that you see in, in Luke's gospel when it talks about the rich man and Lazarus, right. that burning and can, can it just cool my tongue and, and you know, help me out. And, and there's not going to be any relief right. for that. You know, right. the Bible talks about their worm does not die and the fire's never quenched. Right. I mean, those are those are scary verses. Right. Right. Um, but it's not because God's an angry God wanting to send people to hell. No, God grieves over the death of the mm -hmm. unrighteous. Right. And, and he's waiting patiently, unwilling that any should perish. God's will is for us to be saved. Yeah. God's will is for us to be with him forever and eternity. And, and yet still, 
people reject that. Mm-hmm. Wonderful gift. I mean, right. it's like a no-brainer, okay? Heaven or hell? Well, the yeah. obvious option is heaven, but people believe the lie right. and choose hell. Right. Well, we, I think we saw last week that, you know, someone posed that question. Well, if you don't, like you said, if I don't want to be with him, why would I want to go to, right. why would you want to go to, why are you mad that you wouldn't make it to heaven if you don't want to be with, yes. if we're going to be in God's presence? Well, and here's the reason why, because they want the blessings of God Come on. apart from God. Right. You cannot have God's blessings right. without him. Right. Right. You, you can't have the promise without the one who promised. Right. right? right. And, and I think that's where it's like, it, you, Pe- people want to have their cake and eat it too. Right. You know, that's kind of the expression. Um, it, with God, you either get God and right. everything that comes with him, or if you're just seeking the gift, right. you're just seeking the blessing, you're just seeking those things that, that you can get from God. God's right. no fool. Well, so that makes me think of excuses because like you said, I can't help but wonder there's there's a longing. Yeah. You want that, but you don't want the, the part of God. So you want the blessing. So there's that's again, there's that's an excuse. I actually want God's longing, but I don't want to fully surrender or yeah. I don't want to uh, accept this truth. Although there's still a part of me that longs for the blessings of God. I just wouldn't attribute it to the blessings of God. Right. And, and you know, you asked the question, how much consideration and time do I put into thinking about do I need to? And a lot of people, when they approach Romans 1, you know, um, I've, I've scanned through and, and yeah. read a lot of commentaries, listened to a lot of messages and, and did a lot of my, my due diligence to study and to seek this out. And a lot of people... Uh, almost give the impression that they have to defend God. You know, they feel mm-hmm. like, well, right. well, hold on, because God is love, and so yeah. we make sure that we yeah. lay that foundation and understand that. And and yes, there's an element of that when I say that that His wrath and His anger is an expression of His love. People need to understand that, right. that God still is love even in His wrath. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there there is that in, in those terms. But I also view that God is able to handle our criticisms yeah. and even our misunderstandings about Him. Right. Uh, you know, Paul told Timothy, if you're confused about something, pray about it, and God will make that clear to you, too. Right, right. And so God doesn't need me to be his defense attorney. Right. You know, I don't need yeah. to, hey, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I need you to understand about my client. You know, right. it's it's not going to be that way. God can defend himself. Mm-hmm. God is who he is, regardless of how we view him or what we think about him. Th- there is a truth of God that is revealed of who he is, his character, his nature, his attributes, that right. when we understand who he is, when we understand his character— even the wrath of God, then his love will be uh, even more and more shining bright to us. Yeah. And I think that's where uh, I spend less time thinking about how am I going to portray God in the right light because God is light, mm. right? R- rather than, than me try and paint yeah. the right picture, yeah, you know, yeah, that's good. I, I just I just paint the picture, right? That's good. W- what is the truth of this? And then I trust that God is able to clear up the misunderstandings right. through his spirit because, you know, Honestly, you know, the, the gospel is pure and perfect. The word of God stands forever. Uh, however, there's there's jars of clay right. that, that carry yes, this truth, right? We're, we're flawed vessels. And right. so um, I, I may not always use the right words. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I might, I might say the wrong thing. I might use the wrong example. Um, you know, even at times I have to check my motives. Why am that's I good. preaching this way? You know, am I, am I defending God? Am right. I defending myself? Am I trying to, you know... Uh, like, like you mentioned with grace, I'm not trying to cover sin, you right. know, because I feel bad or whatever yeah. those things are, um, you know, and, and, and so even through these flawed vessels with impure motives at times with, uh, you know, flawed yeah. speech and, you know, like Moses said, we yeah. stutter, right. <laughs> things like that, you know, right. I, I just maybe not always as courageous as I should be to, yeah. to declare things. I have to trust that beyond what I say, that the Holy Spirit is quickening his word to the hearts of the people right. and that they're getting it. Right. And they may not get everything all at once because they may not be ready for it, right? right? Jesus even told the disciples, you're not ready for that now, but there will come a yeah. time where you're ready. You know, and later on, they're like, oh, finally, you're using plain speech, yeah. you know, like it's about time. Well, I, I appreciate your humility in that, Pastor Dan, because really now, now you think about it, another excuse could come up. You could excuse yourself from preaching this topic or sure. spending as much time on it because you could paralyze yourself with what people might think. Yeah. And your humility to just say... I know I'm flawed. I will get some things wrong. People will hear this wrong. Yeah. But that's not going to keep me from preaching the truth. And then also shows your reliance on the Holy Spirit if every message that you give. It's never your eloquence or your amount of study. As much as is, I'm going to do my best, study, show myself approved, present it before the Lord, and allow His Spirit to minister. And it takes 
I would as a preacher, the the weight of like, oh my gosh, because we we'd paralyze ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. If we had to think about well, every thought. I, I mean, I work with young adults. I oftentimes probably overthink the different <laughs> angles that yeah. people could people misconstrue this, this right? And so that's what it benefits me. Uh, and I learned from that because, yeah, I, I, it's th- otherwise I'm a, on my own strength all, with every message. Yeah, and you probably experienced this. I was talking to Pastor Paul last night, who leads our Spanish service, and um, we were talking about it. And, you know, there's certain messages you go into that you feel great about. You're like, man, yeah. this is going to just yeah. be awesome, you know, and, and the people are going to be cheering and shouting and clapping, and hundreds of people are going to get saved at this point. I just know this yeah, is going to yeah. be, you know. Yeah. And, and then it tanks. It feels like what— you know, yeah. but then there's other messages that we go into all insecure. Gosh, I didn't have enough time to study this out. Yeah. And I, I, I don't feel confident in the, right. the content, yeah. the message. I just couldn't get it together the way that I want it to. And so we go out there sheepishly just, all right, yeah. Lord, I'll go do my job. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, someone's got to preach. So, you, yeah. know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, we go out there and we, we fumble through this message. And at the back door, mm-hmm. people come to you and tell you, God spoke yeah. to me. Right. That was life changing, right. you know, and hundreds of people could say we were laughing, too, because like, you know, there's times we'll preach an evangelistic message where like, you know, we're preaching out of John and you hit 316. You're like, yeah. dude, the altars are going to be filled and like two people get saved. <laughs> then you preach on finances and there's like 25. <laughs> you're like, what is going on? Right. You know, yeah. but but that's where we we realize that we have to rely on the Holy Spirit in those instances mm-hmm. and in those moments. And, and even to, you know, God wants to reveal who he is. Right. And I think that's where with a subject like the wrath of God, people have to understand the character of God behind the attribute, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So w- I keep coming back to this character, nature, and attributes that's of good. God. Pastor yeah. Jim drummed this into the church. We yeah. teach the character, the nature, and the attributes of God. Right. When you understand who God is, mm-hmm. when you understand God's character behind his attributes, like his wrath, yeah. then then you won't fear wrath because, number one, we're not appointed to wrath. Right. But number two, you understand that perfect love casts out all fear. Yeah. If, if I realize and recognize that I'm in the love of God, mm-hmm. even if I mess up, it takes away that fear of punishment and wrath. Yeah. Now, that punishment might be expressed. There might be a consequence to my action. You know, if you, if you break the law, the punishment for that would yeah. be that the law would come and be executed on you depending on how that is you know you might get a speeding ticket for speeding or you might go to jail for robbing someone you know those things we understand even that the romans 13 says that that the magistrate bears a sword for the reason because he's a minister of god's what wrath yep yep it's an amazing thought when you think about it that god uses the systems of this world even to express his character his natures and his attributes and so his his attribute of wrath can be expressed in different ways. And so we see that given out at times in our lives in punishment for sin. You yeah. know, if you yell at your wife, you're going to be in the doghouse. Right. And that may be a part of that wrath that's expressed. Right. You know, not just yeah. your wife's wrath, right. but the wrath of God. Yeah. Right? That, that there's a consequence to that action. Eternally, we will give an account for what we do while we're here in the body. Now, for sin, we will not be judged. Right. We understand that's already been taken to Jesus at the cross. But what we've done in the body, whether good or evil, there will be works that remain. And works that are burned up. This is found in 1 Corinthians chapter number yep. 3, yep. right? So I understand that if I yell at my wife, that will work. Those idle words will be burned up, and I will not receive a reward for those things. Wood, hay, and stubble, right? But if I love my wife, if I express my care for her, if I encourage her, those works yeah. are going to remain, and they're going to come out gold, silver, yep. and yep. precious stones, yep. right? Yep. And, and And so I have to understand as a Christian that that I'm not judged for sin, I'm not appointed to wrath, the love of God casts out the fear of that punishment, because yeah. even if punishment's expressed, I'm going to make it through, yeah. right? And, and I understand, even if I mess up on this world, I won't be judged for sin, but I will give an account, yeah. and I will suffer losses for those things that I did while in the body. And yeah. I think this is where a lot of Christians don't, don't understand eternal judgment. You know, this is one of the foundational principles right. that Hebrews talks about. And that's where people get off on the wrath of God. They, they they see it as, well, God is loving, so therefore he can't get angry. Oh, no, no, he absolutely can. As a loving father, yeah. he will absolutely get angry when his children are doing the wrong things and doing things that will hurt them and hurt yeah. others. Yeah, yeah. And, and even separate them from God, right? Yep. God would get angry. I get angry when I can't be with my wife. Right. You know, it's like if she tells me, honey, um, you know, uh, we've got a busy week and this and that, and I know we had a date planned on Friday, but now i got to be at this meeting. I'll get angry. Like, what? Right. We planned that. I wanted to be with you, you know? 
So when Christians think, well, why would God get angry if I don't go to church? Why would God get it? God wants to be with you. Yeah. Well, I can be with God anywhere. Yeah. But not like you can when you come to church, when you're in the corporate anointing where heaven opens up. This is Bethel, the house of God. I mean, there's things God wanted. God had plans for you at that date. Yeah. yeah you, you, I'm with my wife all the time, so yeah. why get mad? I'm, you know, I'm going to sleep with her all night in the bed. And, right. and so why get mad about not having right. the date? Well, right. there was something special planned there. Right. And I think it's the same thing. People don't understand. Why would God get angry when I do these things? I mean, God's God is love. He's loving. He's gracious. He'll cover it. Sin is covered. But but those things are going to hurt you. Right. So good. And so God gets angry. And so we're without. Yeah. Excuse. I, I love that passion. You answered a question I didn't even I didn't even have to ask. Cause That's cool. I, <laughs> I wanted to encourage the listeners. Um, how do because we, we're equipped when someone comes, we're our job is to equip the the body for the work of the ministry. Sure. So when I think of, all right, coming and getting equipped, obviously they're coming and being uh, being taught for themselves and, and learning for themselves, but also how might I minister this? And so what I was going to say is, as believers, sometimes we go into our understanding yeah. of wrath, our mm-hmm. understanding of anger. So sometimes we end up being on the heavy hand of, now I'm the gospel I'm spreading is how angry God is. I'm going to my... Now, I just learned about anger at God being angry at church. So I'm going to go. Oh, I already know. I'm taking notes on Sunday. On Monday, I'm writing a list who I'm going to tell, uh, you know, who I'm going to I'm going to correct in the name of Jesus and God's so on and so forth. You. Right. <laughs> and, and so the what I wanted to pull out was the encouragement. But I think you just you hit that so well because you just taught us the 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 viewpoint of what we're trying to do. Right. And, the, and when you said the character, nature and attributes we're learning some of these characters and attributes on in his character, how it e- equates for all of us. Mm-hmm. So that I, I just thought you, that was a home run on, on our takeaway. That, yeah. yeah. Um, because that's, that's what we want to do. We want, we want people to not only just be encouraged when they come to church, but that they are equipped for the work of the ministry. So when they as full-time ministers go into their homes and lead their families or when they go to their job or their friends or their campuses, that they are living this out in a way that is, honest to the text yeah and truthful to who god is so i'm not taking my human nature and now because sometimes we we almost want and this was one of the things i took on notes and we can land the plane because i I wanted to point out how um a a thought i got you know because you you mentioned hey i know this is heavy topic and you're encouraging people but i think people are so hard on our preachers and our pastors because we want preachers to be only the, the good delivery boys, but yet people will put in their ears motivational speakers that will curse them out, Oof. motivational speakers that will call them out on their BS in, in a positive way. Sure. Right. Because why? I don't want to have excuses. So I'll put someone in my ear that will call me out, that will call me on the carpet, that will. But yet our preachers, we want you to pat us on the back. We want you to make, make us, us feel, feel good. good. But it's just like, that's not truth. We're not being fair, right? I mean, if we want to be better people, I don't just need a better a motivational speaker to get me out of bed to not so I can get fit. Mm-hmm. And then I want my preacher who is talking about the ways of life. Yeah. I want you to... So we get it backwards is what I'm For saying. Sure. And so yeah. I, lo- I, lo- I love this thought. Any thoughts on that? Well, you know, we you just mentioned being physically fit, being spiritually fit. It's going to take some some potent truth, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's where the Apostle Paul in writing the Romans was giving them some of that, you know, that that if you're going to take a look at the goodness of the gospel and the power of the gospel and the righteousness of God, you have to understand how we get there. We get there because we're a fallen man. And, and that's a hard truth for some people. Some people don't believe in original sin. Just have right. kids, you will believe. <laughs> you know, it, it's just a part of it, you yeah. know. And, and, uh, and, and so there is, a, there, there is evil resident within our flesh. And because of that, the anger of God is expressed. And we have to understand the wrath of God. And, and how, we, how did we get here? How did we get to things like idolatry, where we're worshiping the image of God in man and beasts and four-footed animals and yeah. creeping things, right? How, how did we get there? We got there on a slow descent. We started high with God, and, and, and then we made our way down. And so the, the reality is, is that, you know, e- even in our Western American, you know, uh, modern society, that we feel that we're so amazing and we're so advanced and that we know everything and that we're beyond God. Yeah. And yet people are bowing down their lives to social media. They're bowing down their lives to sex and addiction. 
They're bowing down their lives to experiences. Mm -hmm. They're bowing down their lives to public opinion. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of things that, that people have allowed to get in the way of God, and that is idolatry. Anything that gets in the way of our relationship with God yes. becomes an idol to us. Yeah. It, it's fashioned by our own right. hands. It's fashioned by our own thoughts. It looks like us. It talks like us. It, it responds to us the way that we want it to. And it, and it never bugs us about our life. It, it doesn't get angry with us, mm -hmm. right? And, and that sort of a thing. And, and, and yet it's a deception. It's a lie. Yeah. And it takes us away from God. And I think that's where... When we think about, you know, preachers telling the truth, you mm -hmm. know, uh, revivals happen because people talked about sin. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, think about sinners in the hand of an angry God. Right. You know, the very famous right. sermon by Jonathan Edwards where people literally were clinging to the columns of the building right. because they felt like they were being dragged into hell. Right. You know, I mean, th that that was a part of a, a massive move of God in the United States. Right. And without that understanding, change won't happen. Mm -hmm. And that's where I don't care if people like me. Right. Honestly, I, yeah. I, I hope that my wife and kids like me and, right. and, and I know that God loves me. Right. You know, but if no one on this earth likes me, right. I'm going to stand before God alone. Right. None of those people are going to be there to accuse. None of those people are going to be there. I have to tell the truth. Yeah. And, and, you know, I look at the prophets and these guys that, that spoke hard truths yeah. to the nation of Israel and to other nations, and mm -hmm. they were ostracized, they were cast out, they were thrown in cisterns. Uh, you know, uh, Hebrews tells us some of them were sawn in half, yeah. persecuted with the sword, they, they crept around in holes in the earth. And, and you look at church history and the people that spoke truth, you know, and, and, and not just spoke truth, like, you know, I, I know that's sort of a buzz language yes. and topic in our day yeah. and age, the truth. Yeah, no, you're right. The truth, right? The truth. Let's make sure that we understand God's truth. Right. That spoke God's truth, you know, and not just speaking truth to power. That's also a buzz statement. Right. Speaking truth to everyone. That's right. Everyone. That the world rejected. And, and yet, those people, the Bible says, have a better resurrection. So good. And that's really what it's all about. I, I'm not putting all my weight and all my stock into this temporary life. Mm -hmm. I, I'm putting it into the eternal life. Yep. And, and that's why a good preacher will not hesitate to declare the good news, which includes... The expression of God's righteousness, right. but also the expression of God's wrath, and that's why this church will yeah. always, you know, we, we used to have the no bull, right? Right, right. I think I think we're going to bring that back yeah, pretty it, soon, yeah, may, yeah. maybe no. on a conference yeah. tea or something like yeah. that. Uh -oh. So, uh oh, watch out, yeah. watch out, it's going to drop. But um, but yeah, I mean, no bull, yeah. no bull, no baloney, no n nothing that right. that you're going to find out there. The truth mm -hmm. of God's word is what you're going to find in these pulpits. Right. As long right. as we're here, as long as, right. you know, we're following the Lord, that's what you're going to find. And, and, and that's till Jesus comes. Right. That's our prayer. And, and that's what we've been talking about, you know, in, in, in closing the thought. We'll, well, we're talking about what makes God angry, and we don't want to make God angry. No. So today we talked about, we know excuses makes God angry, excuses. and we're, we're going to stop with the excuses. And we can do that uh, with our gratitude, with our thanks, with, uh, with, with de making our declarations. And simply, like Glorifying one of your, po your yeah. first point. Don't make excuses. Don't, don't do it. Just <laughs> How stop do you it. not make excuses? Don't make them. <laughs> don't make excuses. I love it. So, but thanks, Pastor Dan. Any uh, last closing thoughts? I know, man, this the time went by so fast. It sure we did. got the sign from Ethan, um, and we we're so blessed. And uh, you got to listen to the message again if you didn't, and if you did, listen again, and then get here over the weekend as we yeah. go into. Uh, this weekend's gonna be gonna be powerful. Like I said, we foreshadowed a lot of it, and um, I'm still meditating on the word and and seeing where God wants to go specifically. But um, you know, we're gonna hit some hot topics, things like homosexuality, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and even um, potentially depending on where the Holy Spirit leads, transgenderism, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, really humanism. When we when we take a look at that, what what where that expression goes? Yeah, you know, we saw those things in in Greece, in in the Hellenist, in ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. Uh, and even what contributed to the fall of Rome. Yeah. And and we can definitely parallel that to where we are in the United States, you know. And so um, there's going to be some, probably some mic drop moments, yeah. you know. No, it's and, good. and I think that, uh, you know, uh, some people will rejoice at that and some people will wince. Right. Um, you know, we have a diverse church that uh, thinks a lot of thoughts, man. Right. And, and there's a, a great group of people here. And it, it really is a picture of heaven because mm -hmm. there's going to be people that, uh, you know, are from all different walks of life and all different backgrounds and all different even thought processes. Mm -hmm. And yet we're going to arrive at the same Amen. conclusion of the truth of yeah. God's word is what we're living our lives by. Yeah. 
And so, um, so you know, I would encourage our, our, our listeners and our, our viewers, you know, uh, to, to just read through those scriptures before we get there, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, and then we're going to come together in church and hear the prophetic mm-hmm. word that God gives and yeah. that God brings for the practical application together. So, so um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And now if you're listening on the iTunes or the Apple app, you can leave your reviews. Ooh. You can share it. We really love that. Five Again, stars is yeah. great. Uh, absolutely. So God bless you guys. We love you. We'll see you soon.